Police are tonight requesting the public's assistance in finding a mother and her four children. 34-year-old Marsha Hepburn, along with her four children, 12-year-old Joel, 8-year-old Shamar, 6-year-old Charis, and 2-year-old Zion of Lottie Tynes Boulevard Millennium Gardens are reported missing tonight. Now, the family reportedly went missing between the hours of 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. on Sunday, the 11th of March, according to police. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of the Peters family is asked to contract the central Detective Unit at 502-9991, 502-9910, or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. Police are investigating a shooting late this afternoon which sent a man to hospital. The incident took place in the Cumberland Street area. When ZNS News arrived on the scene, the victim had already been taken to hospital by a private vehicle. Assistant Superintendent of Police Cleophas Cooper spoke to our news team. Taken to the hospital by private vehicle shortly thereafter. And the incident is now being investigated to see who, what is the circumstances surrounding this incident. There are three significant factors which contribute to crime in the Bahamas. That according to a leading psychologist who has studied human behavior and what leads to impulsive behavior. He believes unless we address the core values of society, we will continue to be impacted by rising crime. Clint Watson takes a look. Crime is not a political issue. Head of the Center for Renewing Relationships and psychologist Dr. Wayne Thompson agrees, though, that the crime issue should be a mandatory national discussion. But he says before the country can move forward, we must first understand that crime is a way of thinking. That means then that when you do not think appropriately about respecting other people's property, about respecting other person's life, about respecting other person's choices, then you have already become a criminal in your psychological reasoning process. In his view, criminals are more than just the people arraigned in court every day, but in fact include those who steal time or even stationary from their jobs. This is a fundamental problem that we have. Crime causes us not to think appropriately. Citing biblical references, Dr. Thompson sums up crime to the lust of the eye and flesh and the pride of life. I want power. I want control over people. We see that every day in our society. Uh, Bahamians are very comfortable denigrating, talking down, and belittling other persons. And they actually can get an audience of big grown adults who are supposed to be sensible to be standing up, clapping, and cheering about it. It is our thinking in this society that needs adjusting. Dr. Thompson believes we have a society of individuals suffering from impulse control disorder. Everything they see they want and it doesn't matter how they get it. That is the lust of the eye. And so because it is accepted in so many sectors of our society, this is the principal reason why crime has become a mammoth problem in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. In our next report, Dr. Thompson addresses sexual behavior and its impact on crime. Clint Watson, ZNS News. The government has placed its seal of approval on a youth organization that has transformed the lives of hundreds of young people over more than 20 years. They provided an acre of land and $100,000 in funding for construction of the Hope Center's new building. From rescuing gang members, retraining at-risk youth, and grooming young women, the Hope Center, housed on Thompson Boulevard, now has a new site located near the entrance of the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. We're told it's just the beginning of big things to come for the organization organization. Here's Cyan Thompson. The Hope Center has proven that they provide a platform to develop the country's youth. For decades now, hundreds of young people moved in the right direction because of their programs. Just listen to C.R. Walker student Travis Robinson. He was once considered at risk, but today he tells a different story. My grades had improved tremendously. I moved from a D average in math to a, a B average. I moved from a C average in English language to an A average. These improvements brought me some of my greatest success in life. I became the head boy at my previous school, T.A. Thompson Junior High, and I passed all seven, seven of my BJCs with five A's and two B's. 
Christina Rollins participated in the Diamonds program and is now studying for her bachelor's degree in early childhood education at the Bahamas Baptist College. Diamonds' responsibility and purpose is to identify, develop, and train young women for every position of influence in the world and to inspire and produce beautiful and successful young women who are self-confident, self-disciplined, and have a sense of self-worth, value, and character. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Charles Maynard threw the approval of Cabinet, making it possible for the Hope Center to acquire the new site. We finally decided on this property and this is half of the full complement of property that we have reserved for the Hope Center. We also decided to put $100,000 in the pot to help him to get started with this project and so we made good on that commitment. The organization hopes to move full speed ahead with construction for the new site. Cyan Thompson, ZNS News. The Florida media is reporting that a Bahamian male who resides in Hallandale Beach and lived directly across the street from a park is facing some 250 counts of child pornography. CBS4 Online's article states that Florida detectives found the photos of children in unspeakable positions when they arrested 26-year-old Kenwood DeVoe on Saturday morning. The article pointed out that the suspect had little to say in court and the judge said bonded more than a million dollars. The report continued that even if DeVoe was able to post bail, he won't get out of jail because he's also being held on an immigrant hold. Detectives said DeVoe is illegally in Florida. Uh, of course, he is from the Bahamas. Officers Rather, the Medical Association of the Bahamas is holding a successful conference in the capital. The event opened by Minister of Health Dr. Hubert Minnis focused on current trends in the medical field. One of the public sessions shed light on children and violence in the Caribbean. Dr. Maureen San Vaughan, professor of pediatrics at the University of the West Indies, highlighted the silent epidemic in the Caribbean and the impact of violence and crime on children. When we asked the children themselves about their, their experiences of what they had seen, the children told us that they had tremendous experiences and, you know, many times these little eyes are watching and we don't often see what it is they're watching. We don't often ask them what it is that they have seen. But when we do ask, we get a tremendous amount of, in, of information. 70% reported seeing someone beaten up. 53% reported guns being shot. Almost a half reported seeing police arrests. 38% reported seeing a dead body. 36% seen somebody stabbed. 25% seen somebody shot. 7% had seen a gun in their own home. Now, Dr. Sams Vaughan also explained that 11 and 12 year olds in the Caribbean use more aggressive forms of violence earlier in life than is seen in other countries. When we asked them about their victimization experience, um, they had been in fights, about a third of them. They had been stoned, they had been threatened, they had been robbed. 2% reported rape, 2.8% reported police harassment. Remember, they are 11 to 12 years old. One in eight reported being stabbed. And when we probed the stabbing, the stabbing was occurring at school. And stabbing is also something that's very cultural to the Caribbean region, and it starts very early. It starts with um, the blades of sharpness, it starts with the instruments out of the geometry set, with pencils. And when you, when you compare um, what, what is happening in Caribbean cultures with, with in the United States, for example, you don't see the stabbing occurring quite so early. One Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. The local daily reporting that housing developer Arawak Homes has won a court of appeal ruling that will award the company $1.1 million. The case states that also lend in pending estates landowners whose land title roots are derived from the late Thaddeus Johnson do not have rights to their property. $25 is now the registration fee for persons interested in attending SME Forum 2012 at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel this Wednesday. The event is spearheaded by the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation, examining issues relevant to small and medium enterprises. 
From international business, China posted its largest trade deficit in at least a decade in February after imports of commodities jumped as companies built up supplies. The deficit was $31.5 billion after imports rose 39.6 percent and exports rose 18.4 percent. Analysts said the widening trade gap may signal deeper economic issues that China will need to address. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by World Fidelity. I'm Alta Bees Thanks so much for watching.